Meanwhile, on the comic box, I'm tired. Comics. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Comic Box, part of the geek to geek Podcast Network. I am Rob, your friendly neighborhood comic geek. This is issue 62, I think, of, of The Comic Box. Uh, I am running solo tonight because I literally just walked in the door from day one of uh, Minnesota Fan Fest which is put on by the same company that does the Fan Fest in Phoenix. This is their first year doing it. Uh, but mostly, I'm going to talk about that, but mostly I want to talk to you guys about my first impressions of The Defenders. Next week I might give you a more clear picture of, of what I think after I've had some time to think about it. But I wanted to give you guys my first impressions right off the bat. Uh, but first, obviously, we talk about the weekly geekery. Uh, I finished... Batman Arkham Origins. I may have said that last week, actually. But I also finished watching The Flash Season 3, which was pretty good. I don't know if I'm going to bother with Legends of Tomorrow or uh, Arrow, and I haven't watched any of Supergirl. My game plan now uh, that I've watched all of The Defenders is to go and watch Legion next, I think. As far as comics that I have been reading, I finished reading all nine I might have said that last week, too. It is hard for me to keep track of things. Uh, but I finished all nine uh, volumes of Morning Glories that I was able to read on Hoopla. And I started reading Lions... Is it Lions of Baghdad? See, now I don't know. Pride? The Pride of Baghdad. There we go. Which was the comic by Brian K. Vaughn that Dr. Ray suggested. I went and picked it up at my local comic shop. So I look forward to finishing up reading that. And I don't think there's any other trades that I'm going to dive into right now. Obviously, I have ones that I've bought but haven't been able to touch yet, but such is the busy schedule of a comic geek. As far as video games, then, it would mostly be Overwatch. I haven't really gone into anything new. I don't plan to for a while. I think the time I put into Arkham Origins, which honestly, I guess, wasn't a ton, but it's very hard for me to find that time to give hours to a video game. Uh, so I don't know that that's going to be a thing I'm going to be doing for a while. And I have things going on the, the next couple of weekends as well. So that's where a lot of sort of that free time comes from for me. And I think that is really it for Weekly Geekery. I don't think there's really anything else extraordinary. I've been trying to watch more Glow where I can, little an episode here and an episode there. Um, I think I am enjoying it more than I was before, but I still have a couple... Episodes to go, I think one or two episodes to go. We'll see, I guess. We'll see. It was a decent show. Everybody told me I had to watch it. Um, it's fine. It's great. I don't know if I like it as much as everybody else is saying that they are. Uh, but I think that was nice. All right. Enough chit-chat. Let's quickly talk about Minnesota Fan Fest with a ba 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 do da do 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 da da do 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 da 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 do do Fan Fest. So today was day one of two of the very first Minnesota Fan Fest, and I want to be nice about what I'm saying. And I can say I had a really good time. I had some great conversations with both comic book creators, uh, including people from the big two. I actually got to talk to Patrick Gleason for a while, who uh, was an artist on Green Lantern Corps and is currently, I think, currently doing Super Sons and uh, was the artist on Robin. Uh, I got to talk to um, Phil Hester a little bit, the artist who did the Kevin Smith run on Green Arrow, amongst many other things. Doug Mankey, who is an artist on Justice League. Peter Tomasi, who wrote for Green Lantern Corps. So I got to tell them how much I enjoyed them using a Steve Buscemi character that they hid in one of their issues called Imescub, which is Buscemi backwards. And he's there for like three panels and gets killed. And they said that nobody else ever remembered that or complimented them on creating that character. But I, I thought it was wonderful and clever, and uh, I like that kind of stuff. So that was fun. Uh, Liam and I did multiple panels. I We both ended up doing the Supervillain Showdown because the third panelist for that panel didn't show up, so I just kind of hopped in and took over as host because it's me, and if you listen to the show, you know that that's exactly the kind of thing that I would do is jump in and help out. 
and by help out, I mean become the moderator for the panel. Uh, after that, we did comic book trivia, which was pretty fun. It was it was a bar style trivia thing. Uh, the questions were way too hard for everybody. Out of a possible like thirty five questions plus bonus points, so a possible like thirty eight points people could could have gotten. I believe the highest score that wasn't Liam, because Liam decided to be his own team, and he scored like 19 points. Beyond that, I think the highest might have been 12, and after that was 5. So we did one round of Marvel, one round of DC, and one round of uh, indie comics, mostly image stuff. And unfortunately, there was only like 8 people maybe in the room doing it, so... I think the the fan fest people were a little let down. They're used to literally seeing overflowing rooms when they do the Phoenix uh, fan fest. So I, I think part of it had to do with the, the vendor room being like two floors down and the entrance to that being on the other side of sort of this conference center. And then you had to so you had to come upstairs or take an elevator, take a second elevator, walk for a while hang a left, and then you had the row of the conference rooms that were being used for the for the panels. Uh, to their credit, they set them up very well. Every room had a projector. Every room had a laptop, so you could load a PowerPoint or use the Internet if you need to. So it was set up well. I think it was just maybe there wasn't enough attention being drawn to the panels or people weren't really sure where to go. And the merch room was huge, so you walk around there for like two hours. You might be pretty much ready to, to head home. So I think that might have been a thing that contributed to low attendance, but it kind of seemed like it was sort of sparsely attended anyway. I talked to a couple vendors who had said that, you know, when they hear things like there's a line at the door, it's usually like a couple thousand people out the door, whereas this was there's a line at the door and it was like 40 people. Uh, So I think some of the vendors were a bit let down. We will see what tomorrow, which will be Sunday. Uh, will bring. Hopefully there'll be larger crowds, more people. I know there was a lot more going on today. It is the first weekend of the Renaissance Festival here in Minnesota. I know the 501st, the, we're doing a big garrison event. Those are the, the Star Wars cosplayers. Almost said Star Trek. Oh my. The Star Wars cosplayers had a big event. So maybe some of those people will show up tomorrow. Instead, I don't know. Uh, we have one of the Boondock Saints, one of the guys from Star Trek Voyager, and the Green Ranger as sort of the guests of honor signing um, autographs and taking photos with people and stuff. So they sort of had lines, mostly the Green Ranger guy, Jason Frank. Boy, I feel like I should know that better. Uh, (laughs) uh, So he usually had kind of a line, but beyond that, there wasn't a lot of people. Uh, But for the panels, like I said, we did Supervillain Showdown, which was a group of randomly selected non-cosmic level villains And then it was sort of drawing two names from a hat and kind of like the card game Super Fight, they debated over who would win. And for some reason, we ended up talking about how Sinestro was fighting everybody over Arby's Curly Fries. I think that was my fault. Uh, But in the end, our winner was Black Adam, was the most powerful comic book supervillain that was not on a cosmic level. Uh, Then, like I said, there was the uh, trivia, which Liam technically won, but... I kept giving him negative points because he was Liam and it made everybody else laugh. And Liam, I think, still got a prize in the end. He just got last pick. Uh, After that, there was the panel for uh, Marvel versus DC Comics, which was pretty cool. Uh, We were on there with another person from another podcast. Shoot. Tomorrow we're on a podcast with someone from Just Enough Trope. On this one, there was somebody on a local college radio show about comic books called The Watchtower or Watchtower something. And the other podcast, and I feel really bad for not knowing it because the guy was really nice. But I tell you what, I will have a link in the show notes. I actually have a business card from him for his podcast because I sent him a link to the audio that we recorded. Uh, It is just in my my coat that I was wearing for my Brody costume. So uh, I don't have it in my hands right now and I'm sitting in my audio booth and I'm not going to go get it because whatever. But that was really good. We had some really good conversations uh, talking about the histories of DC and Marvel comics. We talked about uh, the legacy that both left behind some of their best characters and kind of the way that they've built their worlds over the decades, 75 years of, of some of these companies. And uh, I think we had a good time, and we got compliments afterward. We had more people in the room, maybe between 20 and 30. People came up to us afterwards, told us it was a really good conversation. 
And then I didn't do the Inhumans panel, which I heard was good because uh, one of the guys that was on a panel with us before was on that one. And he came and told me there was like two people in the room uh, because the only people that were still around at the end of the day were in the costume contest, which I got to judge, which was really cool. We saw some really cool costumes. Uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I believe the winner was a character from Destiny. I think the one he said is voiced by Nathan Fillion. Uh, I don't play Destiny, so I'm not sure. The best in show was a character I don't recognize. It looked like a Harley Quinn sort of character, so I apologize that I... Kafka, I think, from a game. Uh, one of the other, the second place, was a character from Final Fantasy XV, and it must have been a character who's blind or has a hard time seeing, and then said a quote at the end of winning of, I've come up with a new recipe, so I hope that's good enough for you guys that know that one. And our... Uh, judge's pick was a guy who was there as Rufio, who not only was like in really good shape, so fit the thing well, because somebody behind us was just like those abs, though, uh, but was the most charismatic, I think, because he went up, got everybody chanting Rufio. Uh, he crowed like a rooster. It was it was a lot of fun. And then the panel closed out with them doing a Disney sing along to songs that I don't know. But there's a couple pictures up on Twitter that I posted to me with the other judges and uh, hopefully somebody will have something on Instagram of uh, some of the other really, really good costumes. I was a little upset. I believe it was uh, people from, uh, uh, what is it, Minnesota Superheroes United? Heroes United, Minnesota? I feel really bad. Not I don't know anything. Like, I just sat in this booth and started recording. I believe it's Minnesota Superheroes United. Had a group that were awesome costumes of the Defenders. And they were there at the end of the day. At like 5.30 when I went upstairs to prep for the, the costume contest. Contest was at 6.30. Like everyone was kind of there at 6 for the rehearsal. I don't know why those guys didn't enter. Because for my money they they probably would have won. Uh, but it was a really good time. And I did manage to record the Marvel vs. DC. As well as the Superhero Showdown panels. Liam also had a Star Wars panel, The Last Jedi and the Future of Star Wars, I think. I got to jump in right at the end so I could ask them what's a Nubian, which is a, a reference to Chasing Amy. I got some laughs for that, so hooray, I interrupted his thing. I also, when they talked about what's in the future, I suggested a Star Wars Hanukkah special, which also got some laughs. Sorry, I thought their panel was being kind of boring, so I wanted to jump in and liven things up. But to be fair, I got in right at the end when they were sort of done and were just kind of taking questions from the audience. But I did not record that one, so I just have the two comic book-related panels. I tried so hard to get the... It's called an icicle that lets me go from a microphone cable to a USB so I could give you guys exactly the audio coming in from the microphones that would have been amazing. It didn't work, so instead I just put my podcast microphone on the table. Those are going to be episodes. You guys are going to be getting that either in the next couple of weeks or if there's a time I feel I want to take a break. I'm not sure yet. The audio quality just isn't going to be great. I apologize. But hopefully it won't be too bad. Considering the crowds were small, there wasn't a ton of crowd reaction, laughing every once in a while. Every once in a while a comment from the crowd, but otherwise it was everybody at the table talking. So... I'm hoping if I can clean up the audio well enough that uh, maybe those will be listenable. But tomorrow, I'm really pumped. We're doing a Harry Potter panel. We are doing a panel on Marvel vs. DC movies, I think, that I am on. We are doing... I'm doing a panel on local cosplay groups, and we're doing another panel, which is a game show. I honestly don't remember whether or not I'm on the Marvel vs. DC movies. Liam is, which I believe means that I am also. I think there's like five of us on that panel. Uh, but it's going to be a good day. I'm going to see if I can record the Marvel vs. DC movies. I think somebody else there might be recording as well. If that person is going to record it, I'm just going to get the audio files from them. And I don't... I mean, I'd like to record the Harry Potter one, but I don't see that as being a thing that's related to comics. So I'm. we'll do our best to take some pictures because I'm going to try and get Liam to dress up as Hagrid again. I suppose, as we're talking about Liam, I should mention, we said this week might be the comic box after Dark. Obviously, it's not. And that is just because I saw every episode of The Defenders. I thought I was only going to get halfway through. I decided to sit down and binge it anyway because I just kept wanting to watch the next episode and um, kind of get through it. So, 
that is, I guess, my review of FanFest. I had a really good time. I met some really good people. I saw some really cool costumes, uh, but we didn't have a lot of attendance, uh, which is a shame. So hopefully tomorrow will be better. And uh, let's talk about the Defenders, shall me? Shall, shall me? That's actually appropriate, isn't it? Shall me talk Defenders good now? da 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 All right. I have no notes prepared, so I'm just going to launch into this. Uh, first, a non-spoilery review is just going to say, I liked it. I think Daredevil is still my favorite. And the one thing I got coming out of Defenders was wanting to see more Luke Cage, actually, more than anything else. And I was wrong about everything. I guess that's kind of spoilery. I was All my predictions weren't on target. But it was good. It's certainly worth your time to watch. And thus ends the spoiler-free review. Let us get into the spoiler-filled review. Spoilers, this is the time to pause if you have not seen it yet in three, two, and one. I thought it was fine, but I definitely have some problems with it. As a film nerd, I think my problem started in the first couple episodes. I thought it was over-directed, and not just because of trying to cut faster in fight scenes to try and make Iron Fist look like he's a better fighter. Because to be fair... Clearly, Finn Jones picked it up and had more time to work with the fight choreographers this time, and it showed. I loved in the first couple episodes where Luke Cage and Iron Fist fight, and Iron Fist just kind of gets slapped around. Uh, I like where he keeps getting a stern talking to. I had a nerd moment when uh, Luke Cage busts in when Iron Fist is fighting sort of the board of directors of this company that are the hand And the guys show up with guns and Luke Cage just turns around to take the bullets and Iron Fist hides behind him and then turns around and keeps fighting. I liked that the show built up some Luke Cage and Iron Fist action with us and it, for the most part, felt organic. As far as characterizations went, went, I thought I had trouble with Daredevil. Um, I thought Matt Murdock still felt like Matt Murdock, but... I think in trying to balance everybody's emotions in one show, he seemed like he was too intense too often, I guess. And I know Elektra was obviously the big issue here, but it still felt a little weird. I thought Jessica Jones was pretty spot on, except when she really joins the fight and doesn't really fight dirty. And the idea that she can hold her own in fights, obviously she's super strong, but has no real fighting ability. So fighting a bunch of ninjas... I would have thought she would not have fared as well. Luke Cage, I thought, was great. I loved all the points. I love when he takes down Iron Fist verbally, talking about how he had power since the day he was born because he was a rich white kid. The argument of not going to try and beat up um, the poor black kids that are doing crime but are just looking for a job and don't necessarily know what it is they're doing. Uh, I thought those ideas and those themes were really strong, and I really enjoyed those. Stick was still Stick. I thought that was good. Electra, I thought was fine. I I think the big thing I took out of the characterizations together is I don't want another season of Iron Fist. I'd be okay with another season of Luke Cage. I would rather get a season of Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Just give me those two in their own show, please, because they work well together on screen, I think. I thought Iron Fist characterization is very much still the character none of us really like. But it works as a strength here when they're together as a group. He's way too earnest. He's way too inexperienced. He's way too hot-headed. You want to be the one to slap him around. And I thought that worked here because he's not the hero. He's just part of this larger group of people. So color me surprised, but I actually didn't mind Iron Fist at all in this one. Um, Let's talk about the plot now. It's odd. I feel like every Netflix Marvel show has that sort of lag in the middle, and I think this one is definitely no exception. And I feel like part of that is because I didn't get some of the things that I expected to happen, where the side characters were there, they're present. You know, you see Jerry Hogarth for, like, a hot split second, and then she's out of the show, You have Foggy, who's around, and he sort of does a couple things. Uh, Colleen Wing eventually gets to do stuff, but for far too much of the show, she is uh, reduced to this girlfriend, like worried girlfriend role, which I hate. 
Uh, again, I, I thought they didn't need her to be a romantic interest for Iron Fist at all. Claire Temple gets to do very little, which is an absolute shame. Uh, she is not really the person who brings them all together. You know, she brings Luke and Iron Fist together after they've already met, and the rest is sort of incidental. And I thought that was a, sh- a shame. Trish is also sort of involved, but doesn't do nearly anything. We get no semblance of Hellcat. And, and I understand that they want to develop each of these characters independently on their own shows, but like this was their chance to do some of that. You know, the only real thing that we got built out of this was a building up of a potential Luke Cage Iron Fist relationship. Um, there was no love triangle between Claire Temple, Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage. Not really. They kind of teased it at the very, very end with all their little epilogues. They teased. Now, the one thing that I do like that they teased, which is out of the comics, and I think we've mentioned this in the past, is you see, you know, the top of the Empire State Building lit up red. And we don't know if that's in order to honor the Devil of Hell's Kitchen or not, or just happens to be the color. And you see somebody crouched looking out over the city, and you get this very Daredevil feeling. And then a fist lights up, and you see that it's actually Danny Rand. I really, really, really hope that we get some more crossover between these characters and everybody's shows, first of all. I hope maybe we see Iron Fist take on the role of Daredevil and be daredevil during that point of time because i feel like that that was what happened in the comic books was iron fist took over the role of daredevil for a while and also to help prove that matt murdoch wasn't daredevil i would love to see that i think that would be pretty cool beyond that there's the big twist big spoilers here of electra killing alexandra who i'm sorry like i'm i'm totally down with the red herring villain the head of the hand is a white lady like an old white lady Like, no, it should be Madame Gao. She was much cooler, much more threatening. She was reduced to a far less interesting role in this one. Uh, They show she has sort of the force push ability. And beyond that, we don't get nearly enough out of her, in my opinion. I think they really built her up in both Daredevil and Iron Fist to be a much more interesting character than we get here. I'm okay, I guess, with the idea of Electra killing Alexandra and taking over the hand except then we don't really get anything from it. She's like, I'm in charge now. Great. What does that mean? Not a whole lot. She wants to find out what's under there. She knows it's the secret to everybody living forever where they cut up a dragon, which to be fair is pretty cool. But beyond that, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like we don't really get it. And like their plan as evil people is they were elders in Kunlun, learned how to live forever through using parts of a dragon, like it's bone marrow or something. They escape and then their whole plan is they want to go back home again and i know the whole thing is the gateway only opens once every however often the plot needs it to yeah i don't know like they still didn't really explain why they were dead hand ninjas all over the entrance to kunlun so i i guess it's one of those things where a lot is to be explained i will say i think the show did a good job of letting you jump in even if you haven't seen all of the other shows um, it was really heavy on the the exposition in order to do that in the first couple episodes. But once you get into the role of things, I think it was fine. I, I, I feel like I'm really, I sound like I'm complaining a lot about the show. I don't really mean to. It is a, it is a good show. And like I said, there's some great nerd moments in there of seeing Luke Cage and Iron Fist fight side by side. But I was really surprised that the character I came out liking the most absolutely was Luke Cage. I am so ready for more Luke Cage. I think he was well written. Obviously, he's he's played to perfection, and I want to see more of him kind of smacking around Iron Fist and turning him into a more rational adult. As far as Daredevil goes and Jessica Jones goes, I'm always down for more Jessica Jones, but there wasn't really anything teasing more of what she's doing except for the very end where you see her door is fixed and her office is getting fixed. And she's going back into the the private eye business. But there wasn't really a whole lot else beyond that, unless I missed something, I guess. So I'm I'm happy for more Jessica Jones. I I just don't know that there was anything here that really was teasing it and pushing me in that direction. Mainly, if it were me, I could do with, I guess, another season of Daredevil, especially if we see Iron Fist as Daredevil. And then I want a season of Iron Fist and Luke Cage and let Jessica Jones be in that show to create that love triangle situation and then kind of call it good. 
You know, I love, by the way, let's talk about Misty Knight. I love that she finally loses her arm. I don't like that she's in the hospital and they're, they're saying that since Danny Rand owns it, they have state-of-the-art tech. Say, the, say Stark. Just say the name. Say the name Stark. You said Hammer in the other one. Please make it Stark Tech. And give her a robot, you know, uh, Winter Soldier arm just like she has in the comic books and give her the metal arm. And I think she is a strong enough character and Colleen is a strong enough character once they actually let her do something that they could totally do a Daughters of the Dragon thing. Like, give them half a season of Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Go between their stories or something and then see if there's enough demand to do a straight spinoff. I think if they wanted to, they could now. Their female characters are generally really well written in these shows, so I would not be opposed to that. I would just think maybe they need to build more ground together in order to um, launch them off on their own. While I'm talking about Tony Stark, I think one of the other elephants in the room is them talking about this giant threat to New York and no mention of Avengers Tower or the Avengers. You know, previously they throw out, I think, little hints, I think in the first season of Daredevil, and they talk about the, what do they call it, the event? No, that doesn't sound right. But the attack on New York from the first Avengers movie. Like, they talk about it loosely. The incident, maybe, is what they call it. Nah, I can't remember now. But they mention it, but, like, they should give me a reason why you don't bring in the big superhero. That is the cost of having a connected universe. You have to say, why don't we call up Avengers Tower? And if they say Avengers Tower has been sold because that's what happened in you know the, the most recent movie in Spider-Man, like, that's fine, you know? Like, that's okay, but you have to give us some reason why that's not happening. My, I guess my only other real big beef is... All of the opportunities to take out the bad guys where you don't. The number of times that you are talking with who we assume is your bad guy and you let them walk back out of the room is infuriating to me. I don't understand it because it doesn't fit the character. Some of them might be too reserved and want to wait for the right moment. Or, you know, Luke Cage might want to wait until... Uh, he's able to go to the cops with it and present a proper case so he doesn't get in trouble again. Uh, but, like, when Jessica Jones plows in and hits Elektra and then, like, just walks past her so she can stand in line with the rest of them, it makes for a pretty shot. I don't see Jessica Jones not, like, punching her in the face or something. You know, I don't see uh, Iron Fist not trying to take out anybody even remotely associated with the hand as soon as he is physically able. You know, there was a lot of things in here that I felt didn't meet those character aspects, I guess. And in doing that, they stretched out the show longer than it needed to be. Or rather, they had all this time they could attribute. Give me Claire Temple doing more work on the side. Give me Trish Walker, you know, becoming more of a Hellcat. Give me more teases for the other shows. They can develop later, but, but I felt like they could have added more meat. Or they could have just done maybe a better job of focusing on these other characters and their interactions because it felt to me like it could have been much better. So again, that sounds very harsh. In the end, I would still say it was good. Maybe I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It is definitely worth your time. It is definitely watching. And I know that part of the reason I have these reactions is because I binge it. So I'm watching it in one giant go, which means I'm going to be more critical of it because I'm seeing it as... The entire Lord of the Rings trilogy, you're obviously going to get bored somewhere in the middle, where if I go back and maybe watch it a second time slower over the course of a couple days, uh, maybe I'll feel different and like it much more than I did this time. But it was just like, man, in the trailer, you show me Daredevil spitting out blood because he's, you know, in a knockdown drag out fight. We didn't really get that. Like he's fighting Elektra, but like. As much as they're beating the heck out of one another, nobody gets any bruises on their face. Nobody is showing any real damage from getting hit as hard and as many times as they are. And then they, like, make out. So, no, that's not the Daredevil I wanted to see. I wanted to see the Devil of Hell's Kitchen who's got that belly fire who just has to get involved and can't give up while everybody else has these more impressive abilities than him and he just mostly has grit. And I, I didn't get that from this show. You know, maybe it was my fault for having too high of expectations. But 
Go and see the, the Defenders. I hope next week when we come back, Liam and I will hopefully dive a little deeper. We'll tell you about the second half of the Fan Fest. Or maybe, because what am I doing next weekend? I have a wedding next weekend. I am going to be on Geektitude. I am going to be on Joe's podcast talking about the Defenders more. So be sure to listen into that. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe next week I'll throw out one of the panels for you guys that we did because they were some really good conversations that we had. And I have at least two of those, depending on how bad the audio quality is. So uh, I guess that is it. That is it for this week with a ba da ba do ba do do ba da do 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 ba da dip ba ba da ba do ba da ba 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 um, first of all, if you are listening to this and this is your first episode you're listening to because you attended Minnesota Fan Fest and heard us plug our show, hi, welcome. I suppose that fits better at the beginning. This is not what a normal episode sounds like because this is just me rattling off my thoughts on the Defenders. But do come back. Please subscribe to our show. If you would, we would love an iTunes review. It is very important to us to try and cultivate those because that is the best way for our show to grow and for you to share the amazingness that is the Comic Box Podcast with all of your not friends out there that get to hear about it through your wonderful reviews. If you'd like to get a hold of us, we are on Twitter at Comic Box Cast. Uh, you can send us an email at the Comic Box Podcast at gmail.com or I will be putting this up on our subreddit, which is uh, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash geek to geek cast, because we are part of the geek to geek podcast network. So come on over to the subreddit, talk defenders with me and all of the other geeks in our geek to geek community. Uh, if you want to know more about the other shows on our network, you can head to geek to geek cast.com. They are amazing. I don't know if they're going to be covering the defenders in the geek to geek podcast. Maybe I was talking to Void earlier today and he, he didn't have time to do this podcast, but I believe he said he also finished the show or was almost finished with the show because that guy likes to binge things. So I really look forward to hearing what he thinks, to look forward to hearing what Beach thinks, and uh, I, I look forward to whatever comes next, right? We have so much more comic book stuff coming. You would think I have a better thing to say here at the end. <laughs> But I don't. If you're wondering why I didn't do a commercial break with the geek to geek podcast commercial, that is because I'm going to play it right now. So thank you guys so much, and we will see you guys next time. Bye! I'm Void. And I'm Beach. And together, we're the geek to geek podcast Well, we make it. It is kind of us, but I guess it's separate. Every week, we pick a topic from geek or digital culture and chat about it for a while. And you're invited. We talk about books and movies, games, comics, the internet. Or really whatever we feel like. Yeah, that too. So look for the geek to geek podcast on iTunes. Or wherever your podcasts are sold. Or downloaded. Or whatever.